Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example, we're trying to find the center of mass. Now, in the previous example, we used the very same wire. We have a semicircular wire with variable density. It's shaped into a semicircle of radius 1. It's more dense at the x-axis, and it becomes less dense as you go farther away from the, from the x-axis. Here's the equation that describes the density. This is called the the density per unit length, or the linear density, is equal to k times 1 minus y, which means that at the x-axis, the density is k. As you go farther away at the halfway point from 0 to 1, it's half k, and all the way at the top, the density goes to 0. Of course, zero density means there would not be any wire there, but that's just at the very, very top. And so we can just go ahead and assume that when you get infinitely close, there's still a very tiny amount of density there. Now, to find the center of mass, of course, that would be somewhere on this y-axis right here, and we're looking for the distance from the x-axis to the center mass of this particular wire. In the x-direction, of course, the center mass would be right at the middle because the pure symmetry about the y-axis. Now, you've probably have done these kind of problems before if you've done physics and find the center mass or have done mechanical engineering. Finding the center mass is a very common thing to do. But here you can see how that is actually a line integral. So here our, our attempt is to show that we can do this using line integrals. Now, the equation to find the, the um, center of mass is as follows. The y-coordinate of the center mass is equal to the integral of the center of mass of a small little segment. So let's say we take a small little segment right here, and the center of mass of that, of course, would be at the height y from the x-axis. So that would be this y right here, put a little squiggly on it, to indicate that that is the center of mass position of a small little element, dm. So we multiply that times dm, and we divide that by the mass of the entire wire, which, by the way, we've already figured out in the previous video. So there it is. That's the mass of the entire wire. And if you haven't looked at the previous video, go take a look at it. And that's how we find m here. Now, dm is defined as the density times ds. And the density is defined here as k times 1 minus y. So this becomes equal to the integral of y from right here, y, times the density, which is times k, times 1 minus y, times ds, and of course the whole thing divided by the mass. And so this is now going to be integrated over the curve, and that's why we call that the line integral. Now the curve is defined by this semicircle, which has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. And so we, we're going to then convert that to parametric equations using the angle theta, because that makes it a lot easier to integrate along the semicircle. So we're going to integrate from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi. And that means that x and y need to be converted in terms of theta. And we do that right here. x is the cosine of theta, y is the sine of theta, and ds is going to be the radius times d theta. But since the radius is equal to 1, ds is simply going to equal d theta. So that means that this equation is now going to look as follows. This is going to be equal to the, I can pull the k out, so we have the k times the integral of y minus y squared times ds over the mass of the whole thing. And that's still considered a, what we call line integral, but now we have to convert it to the parametric equation. Uh, using the conversion right there. So this is going to be equal to k times the integral from 0 to pi. And instead of y, we're going to write the sine of theta minus, instead of y squared, we're going to write the sine square of theta. And instead of ds, we're going to write d theta and the whole thing divided by the mass. So I just write k divided by m right here. That makes it a little bit easier. Now, we're not quite done yet because we know how to integrate the sine, but we're not quite sure how to integrate the sine squared. So we're going to convert that. So this becomes equal to k over m times the first integral is going to be from 0 to pi of the sine of theta minus, and this cannot be written as 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta, that should be the cosine here, of 2 theta times d theta. 
All right, so here we have the cosine of 2 theta, so we need a 2d theta, so we'll have to take care of that in just a moment. And I think we're ready to integrate, so let's go. This is equal to k over m times the integral of the sine of theta, well, the derivative of the cosine, so the integral is the negative cosine, so the negative cosine of theta. Next, we have minus a half d theta, so that would be minus one half theta, minus uh, one half theta. And finally, we have a minus times a minus, that would be a plus, that would be plus one half times a cosine of two theta d theta, but we need a two d theta, so that would be plus one quarter, so plus one quarter, because we're gonna have to add a two d theta, so we have to divide by two, that's one half, one half times one half is one quarter, and the negative times the negative is a positive, so positive, and the integral of the cosine, let's see, the derivative of the sine is a cosine, the integral is a positive sine, so the one quarter times the sine of two theta, evaluate it from 0 to pi. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug in the limits and see what we get. So this is equal to k over m times. We plug in the upper limit, we get the cosine of pi, which is a negative 1 times a negative, which is a positive 1, 1. Plug in the pi here, we get minus pi over 2, minus pi over 2, so we have 1 minus pi over 2. Plug in pi here, that's 2 pi, the sine of 2 pi is 0, so plus 0, minus, plug in the lower limit, the cosine of 0, well, that would be uh, 1, but I have a negative here, so that's a minus 1. Plug in a 0 here, that gives us 0, so plus 0, and then put 0 here, we get plus 0 again. Okay, now, we have a minus times a minus is plus 1, plus 1 is 2 minus pi over 2. So this becomes equal to k over m times 2 minus pi over 2. Okay, now one more thing we need to do is, because we figured out what m was, m was k times pi minus 2, so when we replace m by that, we get the following. This is k divided by k times pi minus 2. And then multiply this times 2 minus pi over 2. And then simplifying this a little bit, the k's cancel out. We can factor out a 1 over 2. So this becomes equal to, when factor 1 over 2, we get uh, 1 half times, in the numerator, we'll get 4 minus pi. And in the denominator, we'll end up with pi minus 2. And that's probably the best way to write the answer. So what did we find? Well, we found the distance to the center mass from the origin. And let's see if that makes sense numerically. So if we grab a calculator, we take 4 minus pi, we divide it by 2, and divide it by the quantity pi minus 2 equals, and it gets 0 0.376. So that would be equal to 0 0.376, which makes sense. So it's about one-third the way up. So the center mass of this wire here would be about one-third the way up. Notice that most of the wire is up here, but it's much thinner, less density. Less wire is down here, but it's greater density. So the answer seems plausible. And that's how it's done.